Hey everyone, it's Dylan from the Black Forest Wood Company. We're back again for another week here in the shop. This week, we're gonna be showing you exactly how we created this round Buckeye Burl coffee table. And it's got a red oak base that we did Shustugi ban on again. So you guys will get to see some more burning. Um, personally, this is one of my favorite coffee tables that we've ever created. Uh, awesome, awesome clients for this one too. I gotta say, they were just a pleasure to work with. Um, and Buckeye Burl is probably also becoming one of my favorite woods. So really excited for you guys to see this one. Uh, please leave a like on the video. It really helps us out. And please subscribe. We cracked over 100K not too long ago. So we're on the road to 200K. Let's try and hit it. After the piece is demolded, we then put it on our Avid CNC machine to flatten it. So the reason we over pour is so that we can fill all the voids in on one shot and then the Avid just cleans it all up back down to the raw wood. Then we head over to our BSE Rover and this is actually what we use to cut the piece round. So we can't do it all in one cut. It would be too much of a load for this machine. So it's actually nine different passes here that we go down and we slowly cut this thing out to a perfect circle. If you guys don't want to go to all that work or if you don't have the CNC machine to cut things round, we now have round reusable epoxy forms. So essentially what these are, these are hold down bars. Do you imagine you'd loosen them, move them out of the way, um, put your wood inside and then you take these little hold down blocks. Um, so we'll pretend this is a piece of wood or something, right? Um, you would put your hold down block in there clamp everything down, stick a little wedge in there, and then you've secured your piece down. And all you have to do is, here, I'll show you guys this. This comes out. So then all it would take is just a bead of silicone around the inside of this groove here. You then plop your piece in. You can slide your hold down bars on. And then you're good to pour. So yeah, check these out on our website. Similar deal um, to what we have on the no seal forms, except these are round and you have to seal them. Okay, so here is the table that you guys have been watching us work on. Um, it's obviously a really small table, but in my opinion, it's one of the nicest that we've done in the past little while. Uh, again, just to go over it, it's Buckeye Burl, 
This particular slab has a lot of that gray coloring as well, which helps it tie in really nice with the, the tinted resin we use. And then also the Shusugi Band base. People are loving, loving, loving this Shusugi Band. It's, it's crazy how popular it's become. We did the bench that you guys saw last week. We did this base. And then since then, if you come over here, we've got three more bases uh, that we're working on, all with the Shusugi Band. So this has become super popular. Uh, I'm quoting a, a big kitchen countertop job for it right now. Um, you guys really, really seem to be liking that. So to finish off this coffee table though, it, the finish looks really good so far, but it's not completely done yet. We still need to do our nano coat. So we're gonna do a quick layer right now of our Black Forest Ceramics, uh, the base coat, just to kind of show you the difference that the Osmo by itself will give, and then what adding the ceramic will okay, do. Okay, so we just posted a how-to on our ceramics not that long ago. So if you guys want a more in-depth tutorial, uh, just click up here on the screen and go check that out. Um, we're using the base coat for the first coat. Uh, one question we got a lot on the last video is about the coverage of our ceramics. So each milliliter will do two square feet. So this 100 mil bottle here will do 200 square feet. So it's, it's pretty good coverage. And this one's actually probably small enough. I'm gonna go for it in one shot. So again, I basically I'm just switching the direction that I'm going with my pad here. First I'll go vertical, then I'll go horizontal. Or up and down, left to right side to side, forwards, backwards. <laughs> Take our microfiber, put a little bit of water on here, and we'll just buff this guy off. Okay, so now that we've got the base finished up and the top all finished up for this table, we can actually uh, mount it. So I'm just gonna do my best to line this up. And we're around 97, 97, so we're good that way. 97, 98, we're within a millimeter, that, that'll work. Um, so that was just luck that it all happened to be right where I needed it. So now I'm just gonna make sure everything is as centered as it can be. Looks pretty good. And then all we're gonna use to fasten this are just some three and a half inch number 10 screws. So they're gonna go in there pretty deep, but that's okay, we want a lot of holding power. And of course, I'm gonna pilot hole everything. So I'm just setting it on here uh, to line up where the legs are actually gonna go. I'm just kind of using this, this paper towel here to ensure that I'm not gonna get any scratches on the bottom. Obviously that's not gonna be there on the final table. So now same thing, I'm just gonna measure in, make sure we're even. We're bang on all the way around. Now, what we have to make sure of is that I'm not gonna hit any resin. And I'm not. I'm hitting wood here, wood here, and wood there, and wood right there. So I'm safe to put my inserts in. We'll go grab our insert kit now and put our inserts in. So threaded inserts are very easy to put in. Three pieces basically you're gonna need. You're gonna need your, um, your Forstner bit. This is actually gonna cut the, the opening or the recess for the insert that the insert can go into. You're gonna need a countersink bit so that the top lip of that insert there can sit flush and not be sitting proud. And the final piece, just gonna need a little Allen key. This fits inside the insert. You can put in your drill to help the insert go in easier. So then you just need one of these, a little punch, put it in your hole, you know, kind of line up for center. Then you can go ahead and tap that in. Tap, tap, tap in. So then something else important here is that I keep the base in the same orientation when I take it on and off. Set it right here in the exact same orientation. That way I don't get mixed up. Now I can go ahead and machine out the recess for the inserts. I don't know, I think it's because the wood is so soaked with epoxy that it's harder than it usually is. Well, 
I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that process. Uh, let us know what you guys think of this coffee table. It, it, in my opinion, it looks awesome. Um, the thumbnail, as you guys notice, is Charlie, and Charlie like matches this table perfectly, which we thought was really cute. Before we finish up, let's go over the products we used here. So it's Buckeye Burl. It's our Black Forest Deep Resin for the resin here. Color Effects Dye in black for the tint. Osmo Pollux to finish everything, and then Black Forest Ceramics as a top coat. Then on the base, we did uh, red oak, six quarter red oak, and then we did Shusugi Band, so we burnt everything. We applied black general finishes dye stain, and then we finished it off with the Osmo Pollux. So all of those products that I mentioned are available on our website. You can buy them from us. Um, yeah, again, this one was a pleasure. Awesome, awesome clients, and thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week.